guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to talk about 20 of the biggest mistakes you can make. And I'm going to try to record this in a really rapid format. I've made a few mistake videos in the past, but I've never really encompassed all of them. Talking about artifacts, talking about just farming strategy, talking about uh, building champions and ranking them up, etc. All in one video. So that is what I'm endeavoring to do today. Let's start out with, let's start out talking about money a little bit. I guess you could argue mistake number one is thinking that you can download of this game and get to the end game without spending money but that hopefully is uh you know hopefully you guys know that's already the case this game is unabashedly a gotcha champion collector game not to be not to say there's no strategy involved as well but there is an equal element of strategy and of course being able to spend being able to at least get energy to be able to farm a lot of good artifacts and kind of scale your account However, that is not tip number one. Tip number one is actually do not buy, uh, not necessarily uh, accessories, although I don't personally advocate you buy accessories, but do not buy artifact sets. The only exception might be epic speed sets because those are very good to get those speed substat rolls. However, even with that, for you know the majority of you guys listening, unless you're at the end game and really looking for that speed gear, I don't advise you spend your money on any artifact set for a very simple reason, not because it's wrong to spend your money and all that stuff. It's really because you don't know what stats you are getting on that gear. You might spend $20, $30 or even more on gear that is just trash, that should be sold, everything. So you're spending 20, 30, whatever dollars on something that is completely worthless. I would not invest in buying uh, really anything that you can't see the stats on inside the shop, inside the limited special offers tab of your game. Tip number two is going to be, and I mentioned this one before, guys. I actually went a while. I've made a lot of these mistakes, and I will tell you the ones that I've made along the way here. Tip number two is... Uh, to use all your daily arena tokens, you're going to want to make sure that you buy one item in the shop. So you get several mystery shards, excuse me, several ancient shards throughout each month. Make sure you buy those. They're 200,000 silver, but they are worth it. Uh, mystery shards are another easy 5,000 silver. And then boom, daily quest complete. Boom, you claim your five classic arena tokens which will help you farm more you can get five extra tokens every single day by using that strategy number three is not focusing on the arena or the great hall so great hall development sometimes when i watch other players when other players ask me for advice on their accounts we start by looking at their great hall and we think to ourselves by the way we're going to upgrade right here boom uh we think to ourselves okay what are they doing? Why is nothing upgraded at all? You really need to focus on your great hall immediately, immediately. Even if you're lower end of the arena, you should still prioritize making a farming arena team. That way you can upgrade your great hall. You should always be using your arena tokens and working on your great hall development because these stats apply to everywhere in the game. And hey, eventually when you max all of these out, it's going to be a huge, huge difference on every area, clan boss, dungeons, arena, everywhere in your account. So definitely focus on your great haul. Uh, mistake number four is not saving your skill books. I said saving your skill books. So if we go to the tavern here, guys, check it out, man. Let's just say I just pulled, which I did. I just pulled, who's my last legendary I pulled? It was, it doesn't really even matter. It was in my last video, but I, I forgot who it was. But either way, I just pulled, Alton's a bad example. You're starting out in the game. I just pulled a Lady Atessa, Lady Atessa. In the beginning of this game, especially not even so with epics, but especially with rare champions, I would pull a champion and be like, ah, they look pretty good. Let's see their skills here. Their skills look pretty good. I kind of want to upgrade. I'm just going to throw a few books into them. And kind of as I pulled a champion, I would just throw books into that champion, kind of haphazardly, without any greater strategic endeavor in mind. I was just kind of like, okay, let's just throw the books in there. Seems like this skill could be upgraded, let's throw the books in there. Save your books. For champions you know you're going to be maxing out, ranking up, and investing in, save your books. It's as simple as that. Make sure you use your books on champions that have really worthwhile skills of upgrading, such as Whiplash. This ability is good. I have the buff and debuff increased chance of 10 and then 15% and the cooldown minus 1. Buff increase chances, buff slash debuff increase, decrease, or increase chances, excuse me. 
plus cooldowns are the two things you want to be looking out for when using your books. Those are books well used. Just getting extra damage, meh, especially if you're not a whale or a huge spender in the game, generally not worth it. Of course, there is a random element of what skills your books will go into, but you should be saving them, making sure that they're going to be worthwhile given the champion that you're focusing on. The next mistake is going to be uh, another thing about books, right? I'm scared to even do this, even do this for sake of the video here, guys. But what you definitely don't want to do, I'm going to put it, I'm not going to use them, but I'm going to put it in there. Don't use your epic books on rares and don't use your legendary books on epic champions. Never, never do it. Books are way too difficult to come by in this game. Make sure you don't do that. It can be tempting maybe to some people to some beginners to use your epic books on rare champions in the beginning because you really want to upgrade them but you don't have any more rare books left don't do it epic books are too difficult to come by certainly the same thing with legendary books as well tip or mistake excuse me number six is going to be where to farm for a long time in this game it's pretty crazy it's kind of embarrassing uh i farmed in nightmare I farmed in 12-3 of Nightmare. 12-3 is the best place to farm for silver in this game next to Spider's Den. Spider's Den by far and away, selling accessories is the best way to farm in this game, right? But number two, because while you're leveling up your, your champions, you're probably going to be farming campaigns, certainly not spiders. Well, it's better to kind of kill bir two birds with one stone, right? So go to 12-3, but I went 12-3 in Nightmare. That's right, Nightmare. No, that's a mistake, man. You have to be thinking about, not about speed and about, uh, you know, how difficult a certain dungeon is. You want to farm on 12-3 of Brutal once you're able to do so. Before that, just go 12-3 of Hard, right? But once you're able to uh, clear 12-3 of Brutal, uh, you want to farm there for Silver. 12-6 is fine if you're just focused on experience, but I always advise people just go for the, uh, just go for 12-3 to get that extra silver because shields sell for about 30% more than the other artifacts. So farm in 12-3, guys, that's where you should be farming. It's the most efficient in terms of energy per silver, even more than 12-3 in Nightmare, okay? So 12-3 is a, a mistake that I made. I went 12-3 Nightmare, not 12-3 Brutal, okay? Uh... Tip number seven, or mistake number seven, I keep saying tip. Mistake number seven, guys, is a, another one that I, I also made, right? And that is not considering or focusing on champions that can help me in more areas, right? So sometimes I would go with one champion who's rather niche. Let's say a champion that I was only going to use in one dungeon. And I would kind of prioritize them, or a champion that just kind of looked really cool. This is uh, Gro Grohawk, the bloodied was my last legendary pull, by the way. But I would pick a champion that I was only really going to use in one area, a very niche champion. And I'd be like, oh, that's really cool. I like this champion. I, I like Rear Guard Sergeant. I can use her in Clan Boss. But then I would have a character like Mausoleum Mage who could probably help me in, you know, five dungeons, right? Five different areas of the game. But I would pass for Rear Guard Sergeant for no reason. I'm not saying these two champions are the best example, especially in the early game though. You might pass, some people might pass on, you know, an apothecary who can help them everywhere in the game for a different champion that can only really improve in one area. So again, I always mention this on the channel, guys, but you want to be thinking of end game viability for these champions. You want to be thinking of overall versatility for these champions and their value over replacement. All three of those factors before deciding which champion you want to focus on, max out, and upgrade, and of course, spend your hard earned resources in, right? Tip number or mistake number, I'm gonna get it right one of these times. Mistake number nine is focusing on flat stat artifacts. What is a flat stat artifact? It's pretty simple, guys. I don't have any actually, but you know, all weapons, helmets, and shields are flat stats. Attack 35 on the helmet. Again, let me just equip one of these so you guys can see. Helmet 600. That's a flat stat, right? But on a chest, for example, well, that's a flat stat, but on a chest, for example, uh, HP percentage, right? You want to be looking at percentages, not flat stats. Flat stats on chest, flat stats on uh, gauntlets can go right into the bin. They can be trashed. They can be sold, okay? Uh, you want percentage stats, especially from those two areas. Speed on the boots, obviously not a flat stat and accuracy and resistance on the chest being an exception to that rule although very niche the next mistake is going to be not saving shards 
four double time events. We have one right now. It's a double chance on uh, sacred shards. I don't have any sacred shards to do a shard opening video on, but yeah, you gotta always wanna save, whether it's ancient, void, or sacred, save those shards for a two times event. Not a 10 times summoning event, a two times chance event. You guys can see here that right now we have a 12% chance to pull a legendary on a sacred shard. Sometimes, especially in the case of sacreds, that means you're holding on to your shards for a couple months at a time because they don't come around that often. Mistake number 10 is focusing on a specific dungeon farming when there's not an event or a tournament in that area. Or at the very least, not capitalizing, a more broad way would say, not capitalizing on current events in the game, right? So when I'm going to be training up my, my champions, I'll wait for a champion training event to be going on. That way I can, you know, stand to gain some gems, some energy, some silver, maybe some shards, maybe a legendary book if I actually do enough uh, upgrading, right? So make sure when you're upgrading or summoning champions, you wait for a summon rush or a champion training event to get that extra value, that extra bang for your buck and your time and your resources. Mistake number 11. I got it right, is again, fat, well actually we haven't really mentioned it yet, Faction Wars, man. Kind of like the arena, guys, right? Kind of like the arena, we want to be focusing on Faction Wars very, very early on in this game. Even if it means you only have one or two good champions in that faction, you still want to be using your keys every day, even if it's only level one of these faction crypts, okay? At least you're getting glyphs that you can use to, to, to upgrade your stats on your on all of your artifacts for all of your champions. Making sure you use your faction keys. They're free every day anyway. You're gonna get them regardless. And then you can go ahead and kind of build up specific faction teams from there. But there's no reason not, forgive the double negative, not to use your keys on a daily basis inside your faction wars. That's not to say that you should focus on upgrading five barbarian champions because that's your main focus in the game. No, I wouldn't do that. I would just make sure I'm using my keys every day. Stages really one through five, one through six really are really easy to do. You should be able to do them with only one upgraded champion. So make sure you're going ahead and doing so. And then stage four, you can get uh, two star glyphs, which aren't that bad to have, you know, considering you'll have nothing before that. Uh, mistake number 12 is not going, this is a kind of a niche one, but I did this for a while. Another one that I, a mistake that I made is I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of clever making these defensive teams using kind of a defensive nuker, such as Drexar uh, Blood Twin, right? Kind of using him as my nuker on my team, but not pairing him with a defense up champion. If you're gonna make a defensive nuking team or just a defense team in general, if you have champions who do damage based on defense, make sure you're putting them with the most valuable buff in the game for those champions. Put them with a defense up champion. Seems like common sense. For some reason, yours truly didn't do it for a while. So yeah, Drexstar Blood Twin. Make sure you're putting him with a defense up. So not only does he have 60% more defense, but he's also hitting 60% harder. Not really, but you guys get what I'm saying. 60% boost to his defense, which is damage is based off of anyway. All right, next, mistake number 13 is not going War Master on Clan Boss Champions. So let's go to a champion that I only use in Clan Boss. This applies to champions that you're primarily only going to be using into Clan Boss, but even support champions. Here's a good example. Siffy the Lost Bride, right? My One of my best champions, right? The best champion in the game, arguably. I don't have her in a clan in a, in a clan boss build right now. I don't have her with War Master. And the reason I point her out is because when I take her into battle in clan boss, she's on my nightmare team, right? I'm luckily able to one key it because I'm a dirty, dirty spender in the game anyway, and my team is already good enough. However, she's putting out like 300,000 damage. If I put her in War Master, she'd be putting out around 4 million damage. That just goes to show how one mastery can affect really dramatically the overall damage output of one champion. And now times that by five champions, it really compounds the overall amount of damage you're able to do on Clan Boss. So if you don't have a War Master, especially on a counterattack team, because it procs off the A1, you're really probably making a mistake. So War Master masteries on all of your Clan 
boss champions, even the non-damage dealers, even the support champions, probably most importantly on your support champions for clan boss, okay? Uh, obviously, there are other masteries, and if they hit three times on their A1, same thing goes with Giant Slayer. But the idea here is make sure you're going with these offensive tree uh, tier 6 masteries rather than somewhere else on all, even your support champions for clan boss if you want to totally optimize your, da your damage. Uh, mistake number 14 is not focusing on the middle row of artifacts first. Sometimes I see players, especially newer players, just kind of randomly upgrading their weapon. Uh, maybe they'll have a max shield on their other champion, and then they'll have level 12 gauntlets, level 12 chests, and level 12 boots. No, no, no. The middle row, or the second row of the normal artifacts outside the accessories, is by far superior to the first row for most champions. You want to make sure, because that's where you have your speed usually on your boots, it's where you have your main stat on your chest, and it's where you have your crit damage or your crit rate on your gauntlets for 90% of your champions. Here in this situation, I have Siffy in defense gloves, but in most cases you're going to have crit rate or crit damage, which is really important, even if you do have a defense gauntlet on the champions it's really important to make sure that you're upgrading those or prioritizing those artifacts over your top row of artifacts mistake number 15 is in this one I some people disagree with me uh, on when I mentioned this last time in the comments I don't know why because I still stand by it but some people out there they go with attack percentage on their gauntlets I don't see any need or reason to even bother keeping any attack, uh, let alone f uh, attack uh, flat stats, but even attack percentage on your gauntlets. I'd rather, go if you have enough crit rate from other gear, if you're able to get your character to 100% crit, uh, crit rate from other substats, great, good for you. But it's still better to go crit damage in that case on your gauntlets than it is attack percentage. I don't see any reason to go attack flat stat or attack percentage on gauntlets. Those automatically get trashed. I made the mistake of upgrading a few gauntlets, uh, attack percentage gauntlets to level 16 max. And then I realized, wait a second, this is useless. I'd rather have attack uh, crit damage or crit rate. So that uh, attack percentage, I would trash. I would never use them on my gauntlets. And the same thing on my amulets, I would never use attack on my amulets. I would always go crit damage on my amulets because crit damage is more valuable in a vacuum than attack. There can be exceptions to every rule. These are just guidelines here, guys, but I don't see a reason to keep attack uh, amulets uh, and attack on my gauntlets, okay? Uh, the next mistake is gonna be crit damage, especially on your cold hearts of the world, your royal guards, your septimuses, your husks, your armigers in the world. That's right, I'm talking about champions that do damage based on enemy max HP. For example, despair, based on enemy max HP. It's really important to prioritize on these champions. They're not doing damage based on attack. They're doing damage based on enemy max HP. So you just wanna prioritize crit damage, 261% over attack. People make this mistake a lot on Coltart. Sure, her A1 and her A2 still do damage based off attack, but if you wanna put out those 1.82 million damage hits off of her Heartseeker ability, you wanna make sure you're prioritizing crit damage not so much attack. By that same token, it kind of goes for every champion. You see decreased dividends, decreased returns on your attack on champions, but you don't really see that on crit damage. So build them out to have a decent attack. You know, everybody's a little bit different, but around 3,500, I think is what I've heard, around 4,000. 3,500 to 4,500 is where things start kind of diminishing returns and it really crosses over to crit damage. So make sure you're focusing on crit damage on your champions. Crit damage matters a lot in terms of the overall damage output. I've done a bunch of tests on this in previous videos to prove this theory true, okay? Crit damage, even if you have a defense percentage chest on your characters, on your damage dealers, that's fine. Make sure their crit rate is there and their crit damage is there. Number 17 is not putting speed boots on dungeon, clan boss, and arena champions, okay? Speed boots are so important in this game. I mentioned this time and time again. What good is a champion that can hit really hard because he has attack percentage boots on? Or a champion that can survive a really long time in clan boss because they have a defense percentage boots on if they don't get that many turns, right? If they don't get that many turns to actually do damage. Speed boots are so important for 
80% of players out there, right? Now, there are exceptions to every rule, uh, especially in the arena. Some people do go attack percentage, especially in clan boss and ultra nightmare nightmare. Some people do go defense percentage. But those people usually have god tier gear, where they're able to get their speed from substats of all of their other gear. Sometimes you'll watch other YouTubers, even myself included, I'm not trying to take shots here. And you'll see they have, oh look at they have a defense percentage or attack percentage on their boots. That means they're probably in a speed tuned team, and they probably have such great gear, they're able to get enough speed on all of the other substats to not have to use speed boots. Don't make that mistake yourself. Make sure you are using speed boots on the majority of your champions. Speed boots is the only artifact where you can get speed as the main stat on boots, excuse me. So make sure you take advantage of that on your champion. Next one, mistake number 18 is actually a simple one, but it's very, very important. In the arena, in any dungeon, making sure that your team is speed tuned or the order of turn is proper in such a way that your decreased defense champion, in this case Tyrell for example, uh, decreased defense on all of the enemies is going before your nukers. Simple, right? But before your damage dealers go out, usually this means your first or second champion to go should be your decrease defense champion, your debuffers on your team. That way they're setting the table for your nukers to come in. If you have a team where your decrease defense or your decrease attack champions are going last, what help is that really giving you, right? It's certainly diminished returns. So make sure you have your debuffers going before your attackers on your teams. Uh, before your debuffers, you can have your increased speed champions, that's fine. Uh, but really before your crowd control champions and before your damage dealing champions, make sure you have your, and then have your support champions, your healers going last. Because what help does it really do if your healers are going first on your team, right? Uh, just make sure you kind of take speed of your team, the order of your team, of your turns into account, especially for arena, where oftentimes there's only one or two turns and the battle's over. In a long, long dungeon match, things can kind of even out as you go, okay? The next mistake, number 19, is not speed tuning your clan boss team. There are about a dozen different speed tunes, and there's a lot of great websites. Deadwood Jedi has a great one, a great channel to check out, guys, if you want to learn more about clan boss. I'll include all that for you guys in the show notes below, but speed tune your clan boss team and you will get sometimes a double sometimes triple the results that you previously had and the last mistake is mistake number 20 not investing especially in the very early right when you kind of download this game or at least after you play for a few weeks when you realize if the game is for you do you like this game go ahead and invest in your gem mine uh, gem mine is a great investment to make because after about four or five months or so it's gonna be it's gonna be paid off, right? All of the costs that it, it, it did to, to upgrade, all the costs that it cost to upgrade it, you guys get what I'm saying, right? All of those uh, those those investments is gonna be paid off and it's all gonna be gravy, right? It's all going to be profit for you after that point. So I, you know, maxed out my gem mine a year ago. And now here I go, every single day, every gem that I pull from this gem mine is 100% profit, it pays for itself. So as long as you think you're gonna be playing this game in six months or so, just go ahead and, and, and do it now. Max out your gem mine, that way you're getting just gravy on the back end with all of those daily gems. Guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned a tip or two. Did anybody go through this video and not make any of these mistakes ever? Is there a huge mistake that I missed? Let me know in the, the uh, comments below, guys. Thank you for watching and as always, Take care, guys.